Frozen. Okay, it just unfrozen. Okay. Resolved that the Board of Education approved the minutes from the December 17th, 2018 regular board meeting as attached. Can I have a motion? So moved, Kelly. Second? Second. Jerry. Second by Jerry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried six to zero. Um, amendments or adjust, adjustments to the agenda by the superintendent or board members? Any adjustments? Adoption of consent agenda. Consent agenda. Resolve that the following consent agenda items be approved 8A, CSE, and CPSE recommendations, 9A through J financial reports. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second, Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried 6 to 0. Uh, special matters and recognitions. Congratulations to Matt Adams and his wife on the birth of their daughter, Sloan Louise. To the floor, do we have any people to the floor? No. Presentations. Josh, you're up first. He's really going to give us baby pictures. I was going to say, congratulations <laughs> to you, <laughs> also. Thank you much. She's getting big already. Started rolling over. Oh, boy. Uh, good evening. Thanks for having me here tonight. I thought it would be appropriate if we gave the board an update on the district cap. This will be brief. Um, there's just a few things to go over so you are not surprised with what it will look like when we get it. And there's a little bit of uh, marketing and PR we're going to have to do before we actually launch. For the past, uh, gosh, maybe eight weeks, Dave Fox and I have been working very closely with the folks at Blackboard, who are the providers for our district app. They're also the same uh, folks who do our website hosting. So it works in tandem with our website, and you'll see a little bit of that as I kind of explain the way that the app will work. Our app is not finished yet. We are reviewing the final design and layout this Thursday, scheduled uh, for Dave and I to look at that, and then it'll be about another week before we can actually launch and start to going the fact that we're using this app. So what you're going to see on these slides is the way that it'll look, but the color scheme is a little bit off because they haven't given us a view of what it will match uh, as far as our uh, as, uh, as far as our colors and such. But the slides or the, uh, the slides will reflect what the app will look like overall. So I think that's yes. Okay. So the app, where does it come from? The App Store and the iTunes Store. The first hurdle that Dave and I had to get through was getting the approval of Google and Apple. Apple is a uh, interesting company to work for. And especially in the month of December, 90% of those folks take off for the holidays, which is why we've kind of been back on. We thought this would be up and running the minute we got back to school in January. That wasn't the case because Apple wasn't there. So, and that's also part of why it'll be about a week after we approve the layout, it goes back to Apple. If they don't have any issues with it, away we go. Google is not that way. They're more than happy to put anything in their store. So when you land on the app after you download it for free from the app store with whatever device that you're working on, open it up. You will first be prompted, be, uh, prompted to find our school, which is simply our central school district. Select that school and away you go. We will have directions for all of this in uh, press release form. We'll have information on our website with a very simple one, two, three, step by step, how do we actually make this app work. The next process, the next step in the process will be to accept or not accept push notifications. <coughs> Everyone should accept the push notifications because that's exactly how we will be pushing out school closings, canceled activities, if a sporting event changes that's important that we need to know about. Those notifications will go to everyone who has signed up for them through the app on whatever device they have. Question. So the push notifications, can we choose which ones? Like, I don't want sports updates at all. Absolutely. Okay. So you'll also be prompted to what school you would like to follow. If you want to see district, you can accept the district as something which you want to follow. If you would like to see district and elementary, you can accept that. You can choose to do all three buildings plus district or just one building. 
So whatever happens with that building, that's what you'll get the notifications for. So if you want to be bogged down with lots of stuff, you're your guys. If you don't, we're also your guys. So our top stories will always show up as the main features. So the latest news. This happens to be the uh, Wall of Honor nomination. That's the top story that we have right now. The little arrow right next to that, you can swipe to the last five stories that we've had there. So the news hits you first. The little news button that's right below that, if you push it that, that will take you to everything that we have in our news. The school data speaks for itself. The notifications, when we do send out a push notification, whatever the notification alarm that you have on your device will go off, and then a little red number will pop up there. So if we send one out, you'll see a little number one right above the notification, you can hit that. If we send out more than one, if you have to read them or however you backlog that, that number will also appear there. So if we send two out, you missed it, we send another one out, you'll have a three there. And you'll be able to see all the notifications that have gone out up until the person, whoever is using the device, has actually looked at those notifications. They do not go away until the user takes them away. Right. So the second slide, when you swipe, uh, right from here, you see the three dots at the bottom of the screen, right, uh, you know, right on the top where it says Powered by Blackboard. That means there's two other pages that you can look at. And this will take you to the next page. So these are things that we have chosen to show up that people have been telling us that that's what they want to see. I think most of this is self-explanatory. Any of these that you click on will take you to that portion of the information held either in the app or back to our website. For example, the directory will be uploaded this week, and it'll be our full district directory. People will be able to search by teacher, by staff member, by administrator, and they'll be able to find all of that right there with their email, uh, etc. Calendar will take them to our main calendar page. Uh, the photos is a little bit different than news. Photos is every photo that we have up on our social media and our website. So if it's not the top five that we're showcasing, Anything else that we put up, we're going to store there because people like to see the photos of what the kids are doing, and they don't go away. They're not pushed out as we put a new piece of news up on the main portion of the app. The athletics uh, button goes right to the athletics department with a link also to, um, me, to uh, the scoring system that we use. I forget the name of it right now. On the website where we have the updated score. Menus go right directly to our menu page of the website, as does the unemployment section that goes right to our website. Resources we're developing right now, that will be budget information, that'll be code of conduct book, that'll be student handbook. All of that will be housed here as well that are also downloadable in PDF format. So if someone does not feel like navigating through our website, they can go directly to the app and find all of those documents that we want to have housed there. And again, it's limitless. We can put anything up there that we would like to put up. If we're not limited to one or two, we could actually have folders with subfolders to go uh, individually by school or district. The world is our oyster as far as what we want to put up. My School Bucks is also um, self explanatory, as is the parent portal, and the Facebook feed. So, this is the way we've set it up now. We can change out the place update any of these sections of this app whenever we so choose to. That's part of the reporting feature that we get through the app. We can, week by week, day by day, see where people are going to on the app, where they're getting their information. If we see that no one is accessing our Facebook page through this portal on our app, do we really need to have a button that says Facebook? Is there something else in the district that is more important that should be showing up here? We have the ability to do that. We have the ability to create all those documents through this app or send it back to our website. So that is, again, very customizable and we can change that whenever we want to and it's instantaneous. The minute that we change it, the app is updated and that will reflect in anyone who's using the app. Josh, what's the tip line for? The tip line is, um, this is interesting. We left the tip line up there that can act in two different ways. On our homepage, we have our bullying line. For a student, if they're having an issue at school, they can click on that to report harassment. This tip line works in tandem with that. At the next ACM meeting, we're going to have to delve into what we would like to do because this works in the same way that that does, where if you wanted to report something that happened in school, you 
You can do that through the tip line, but it also acts as if someone just has a suggestion. The flowers are looking a little dead outside the middle school. And we can write into that, and it'll send it to the appropriate administrators or wherever else needs to see that, separate from the bullying line that we have on the website. Now, having said that, this app, the portion of the app, this tip line, is also an embeddable link that we can put on our homepage instead of the reporting system that we have now. Now, that's not a decision I'm going to make, and that would be something we're going to have to be have discussion, obviously, with the board as well. But if we would like to use this tip line, we can join at the hip with the website using this, and all of whatever they would report on the website or here would go to the people who need to see. So I have a question. Yes. So could it, like, go out like the tip line, you go to the tip line, but it could be suggestions, it could be the anti-bullying, it could be sexual harassment. That's correct. Okay, and because some go and anonymously. Actually, yes, this tip line actually has, we can have any uh, categories that we would like to popular or populate that with, and we can also populate it with who needs to see. So if it is bullying, it needs to go to the SRO. Yeah, that's so what I mean. Principal, okay. whatever administrator, whoever else it needs to go, we can have some directories for all of that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, the superintendent page would just be the superintendent's oh, message. You can change that. We don't want to change that. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Oh. We, we would like it without Kelly. a tie. I was thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Like, yeah. hey, it's gender specific. So we can also change the Thank you, girls. <laughs> I would like it without a tie also. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, you would. Great. As a matter of fact. Ross would do it. Watch the Jerry's the chagrin. <laughs> and these are just the standard logos that came with the app. We can customize these. <laughs> we can change uh, anything else you'd like to. We can also uh, update I didn't even notice. all of the photos and emails wherever we want to. There is, I didn't put the third page up, but there is a board of education page where everyone will be listed there and how to take you as well. And if you would like your picture there. Nope. Uh, nope. That was just going to say, don't put my picture there. Yeah. So, launch date. After we have our meeting on Thursday, and we have verified the color scheme, the logos, everything is properly stored where it's supposed to be, we're ready to move forward. Now we have to make sure that everybody knows where they find it. We have access to an incredible toolkit of different ways that we're going to push this information out. Number one, we're going to hit the local media to make sure that articles are in the paper with full instructions on how to get access to this app. But we're also going to take advantage of our current web page as well as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So these are all formatted for those uh, different, app different applications that we're already using as far as social media goes. We also have print and a YouTube video that we're going to upload to make sure that's embedded. That also has an overview of kind of what I just said. So anybody who has questions can refer back to the references we're going to have available to them. And of course, they can always contact us if they have any questions. There's also a print piece, and uh, we're just deciding we want to put out some flyers at uh, Town Hall and anywhere else that we can to try to drum up a little bit more uh, usership with this. So this is basically a one-stop shop. Our Twitter feed, our Facebook page, our Facebook is there, our web is there. Everything that you see on our homepage will be available here in the limited way that capacity that we have and the choices that we made right now. But again, it's fully customizable and we can change up at any time. So that's where we are with the app. And we'll have an update with uh, Dave and I after we meet uh, for this last time with them on Thursday. They will probably give us a buffer. I talked to our program, our project director today, and he said it's usually about a week. Apple's the one that drags their feet the most. They just want to cross their T's and dot their I's. But as soon as they have their permission to move forward, we go live, and that's where we have to promote this out. I will say this, we added Instagram just a few weeks ago. Um, it is taking off. It's, I don't know how many people here are on Instagram. Kids love it. Um, but right now, I believe we're just under 900 followers on Facebook, just under 200 on Twitter. But in the last week alone, I think we've picked up 48 followers on Instagram. So if we continue to push that out, that trend is just going to go and go and go. Um, and I'm hoping that if we take advantage of what we have, more and more people will sign up for this app because, again, waiting for the TV, waiting for the radio. Um, we updated the closing on Friday at 5.30 on the web and our social media. But if we can do it with this app and anything else that we need to, it's just another way that we have 
interaction with the community and I think And you said we've been getting a huge number of hits on some things we're pushing yeah. out, right? Yes. And, the, the, and honestly just with the shares alone that we had in our social media, it was pretty astronomical how many people picked up on the closings immediately and sharing that out. So this will just be another extension of that with a lot more functionality and a lot more so will the calendar be kind of blended all together? Like the one thing, and I, I showed you the app that I had looked at, yes. and what the, they had one calendar on there that kind of blended everything together. So it had the elementary calendar on it, it had the high school calendar, it had the middle school calendar, athletics, had athletics um, the, the uh, band concerts, it had everything all blended on one page. Because what I find with myself, and consider myself pretty well informed I'll just have nothing going on one night and I'll try to find something to go go to and it's very difficult to find through our website so if it was like one calendar that showed everything that's going on in the district the district, the district calendar will reflect that okay and then again you have the option of I only want to see what's going on at the high school you'll have the ability to okay that okay in the high school department. okay that's great anything else School by school and district by school That's great. There was a third window that was on there. Is that was it a blank page that was? So that you had actually, three. Just another extension. Okay. Of the board of okay. Um, and regarding the tip line, and this is my own personal feedback, I I think there's a difference between tip line and feedback, and I do not want people going to tip line to tell us that the flowers are dead in front of the middle school. Um, I think they are two very different things and I don't care if we have a separate button on there that's called feedback and it might be about the app it might be about anything that has to do with the district um, but I think they're very they are simply different things I think everybody would take a tip line as being something to report urgent. The, you know urgent that you right. want to report uh, <clears throat> like the wording on it and then it can go you said it can go to separate folders whether it's yeah, but I, what I, what I guess what I'm kind of advocating, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm one guy. The somewhere else right. for the comments. The, the non-urgent stuff, tip line to me is, I'm getting bullied, I'm getting harassed, um, you know, something's this, going down, yeah, like it's this, an urgent that, thing. Right. <clears throat> right. And because it is customizable, we can limit it to just that. We don't want to have the, uh, the functions of the school calendar and school calendar and the administration, you know, have to be. Right. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Um, we have Dr. Lori Pless, and we have Mark Weil. I'm sure you all know him. Um, Lori is the current director of the Western New York Educational Service Council, and we've asked them to do an enrollment projection study for us, and Mark helped work on that because he has some intimate knowledge of the district as well. So I think they're going to present in tandem, please, right? Thank you. Thank you.
which does show a reduction in enrollment. But should that birth data increase or perhaps even decrease even further, then that will have an impact on your enrollment, particularly the early grades as you, as you move forward. So um, the recommendation as part of this report is to take this as a snapshot of where, of where we are now, but should that birth data when we get the following year uh, change, um, so that you get your two, 2017 birth data and it changes, then that will have a, an impact on your um, uh, your kindergarten enrollment projections moving forward. Mark, yeah. question on that. Yeah. <clears throat> So is, what, where does that data come from? Is that based on surveys that have been sent to homes and we ask them to no, respond? This is actually or? From, uh, from New York State. The sources uh, uh, underneath the, the graph there. Sorry, yeah, I just haven't had a chance to read yeah, through it yet. Yeah, it's, it's actually from New York State. It's the vital statistics of New York State. The most recent data that we have is 2016. That data does break the birth, uh, my birth, uh, information by school district. Okay, good. So that was my next question. Holland Central School District and, and extrapolate that. And so when we look at enrollment over the past 10 years, and many districts are going through this, it's not unique obviously to here. Um, and then as we continue to project and we see that that continues to decrease a little bit, I mean that number is never approaching zero. Um, at some point, it's just families that are no longer having four and five children, they are having one or two. And so we have to assumably be getting closer to that point where we're going to start to see enrollment plateau right. or potentially even increase. So I bring that up because I think it's easy to look at these things and say, you know, it's the school apocalypse going on here and, and it's not the case because at some point this is going to this is going to level off. That, that's a great point. I think both Laura and I were going to that. That's okay. absolutely correct. This is not a projection of anything. It's really just a reflection that if these numbers are where they are and they stay at that particular level, then you would expect to see X. But the recommendation is to continue to take a look at these annually. And you're quite right that the, there are so many houses in the district, and you will see that fluctuation where uh, young families will be moving in, um, and you may see uh, a surge again. And what then that will reflect is that the, these numbers that were presented today, if you see that go up to 60, 65, 70, will indeed show, you know, five and eight, all of a sudden is 20, 25, 30 students. So this doesn't necessarily mean that in, in five to ten years, this is exactly what the population will be. Um, but uh, the recommendation is to keep a good eye on that. But, but this is not reflective of any census in his right. Yeah. And, and, and again, just to, to reinforce, you know, the, the cyclical or cyclical nature of this, um, I mean, when I was a student here, there was a class that was two years ahead of me that graduated around 120 or 130. My class was in the 80s. Okay, so it happens. And so it's nothing to freak out about. <laughs> Uh, 
um, these numbers may say in the future. This is really just a reflection of uh, what the statistical information says, and uh, then you can build from that. Yes. Yeah, so it's all much higher. So we kind of uh, we go to the next two pages, page A, page nine, to see the uh, actual numbers we put in the graph for you. So we're visual, like to see the graph, we can also sort of look at numbers. Um, but that gives you both purple tutorial and a number of that. Um, on page 11 is the last thing that, you know, sometimes that's a significant impact, and that if you're not enrolled, you're in the public school. So what we did was we went through and we broke out where some of these things are going to spend the next year. And then we have the next page of the information and data on that. And there's a variety of resources we have that people have. Some of the things here is about here, it's going to be paid, we have to get facilities, programs, those kinds of things. So you just control over some of the things here too. But if you look at the next page, what you will see is from 2012 to 2015,
Thank you. Thank you. Good. Any questions? Thank you both Thank very you. much. Um, you're on. Okay, so they mentioned budget several times in that presentation. A perfect segue, obviously. So each of you have the presentation in front of you. And yes, Kelly, it's in black and white, double-sided. So, okay. Um, so a couple things, number one to know. First of all, on the front page, you'll see um, it really has been an administrative team effort throughout this whole process. And you'll even notice with Lori's name on there, yes, she is on maternity leave. Prior to her going on maternity leave, she looked at, obviously, the curriculum and instruction budget as well and took a look at what was going to be needed for the coming year. So um, it is great to see. I've worked in a couple districts, and um, it's a pretty good team of working together and wanting to come up with a sound budget. So uh, from that perspective, it's, it's great to watch it. So um, as we take a look at it, what will we look at tonight? Uh, we'll look at a couple different things, some of the increases, reduction, and some uh, conversation about the reserves. We'll take a look at the spending, take a look at the revenues, what the shortfall is, and yes, I say shortfall because I don't know any district that starts the year without some sort of shortfall to begin with. Um, maybe there might be one district out there somewhere, but uh, hey, kudos to them if that's the case, but that's very difficult. Uh, summary and then questions. Part of the questions, I definitely want to give you guys time for the wish list to talk about what you guys are looking for in the budget process as well. So I'll definitely leave time for that. Okay, increases, reduction, reserves. A couple things to note as we took a look at the budget. Uh, first, there are fixed costs. So I'm, I know I'm not going to be telling you a lot of what you don't already know, but as we look at the budget, there's certain things that we have to keep in mind. Uh, contracts, obviously, first and foremost. Uh, the increases for salaried employees. One nice thing is that at this point, all contracts are settled, so we do know exactly what the increases are going to be, so that definitely helps. Um, so, increase in contract services. Something I want to point out, debt service. Now, we're going to see this on both sides. We're going to see on the spending side, you're going to see our debt services definitely going up this year because the uh, payments now for the last capital project have hit this year. You're also going to see on the revenue side the offsetting state aid to go along with that as well. But you will see that on the spending side of it. But this is the one year where we we have the expenditures, but we don't have the income coming back yet. Correct. Right. Yeah, that is correct. Yep. Um, so on the spending side, you're going to see that we are still every year we retire some stuff. You're going to see a definite jump in the income as well. And then, of course, with both C's, there are some contractual increases. And, of course, we take a look at student needs every year and uh, what students are going to both C's program. Um, on the next page, we have some uh, requirements that we definitely have to take a look at. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I think as the entire board here has uh, definitely uh, known, the addition of the principal for next year as being a requirement. Um, the administrative team took a look at program and some of the uh, needs for next year. Two of them are special education and a math, and both are a combination for middle school and for high school. And also, we are looking to uh, focus more on our um, curriculum work. So, in both gen ed and special ed, so uh, looking and tying them into the district's goals and making sure that we're, we're doing exactly uh, what's best for students and align with the board goals as well. And to, to try to do some of this work during the summer, the majority of it, so that we're not forced looking for subs that we all know is a situation that is very difficult, not putting the teachers out of the classroom. So trying to put enough money in the budget whereby we will be able to pay a good amount of teachers to in Jenna and special ed so that we can get the curriculum work done. You know this past summer they did the math curriculum work. We're going to carry it over to the LA. It's a framework that's been established that we want to continue to build upon throughout all of the content areas. And um, special education right now, I told you we're working with that task force. We're going to do the audit, and we want that to go in tandem with that so that you know they work together. And we are sure that we have supports in place for all of our staff so they can work. So is that a person or a dollar amount? No, it's a dollar amount. For all teachers, everybody. Really dollar amount. Thing. Yeah, he was going to get to the numbers. <laughs> uh, and then finally, wish uh, with the wishes items. 
So, a couple things to note. Number one, um, every teacher's wish list items have been included in this budget, so they're already accounted for in here. Um, the books, uh, the high school book is in my office right now, um, and anyone who wants to take a look at it, you're certainly more than welcome to, um, as well as for special ed, uh, the middle school and elementary school, we can get you those books as well, so just let us know if you guys want to see them, but all the requests have been rolled up there as well. Uh, we were going to try and put that into Excel format and put all the pages on there. Um, I will say um, the book just for the high school alone looks like War and Peace, so it kind of it wasn't really something that translated easily into bringing into Excel format and just putting it in the So, so what the book says is they printed off one copy of everything, every everybody's put in every page, every line item, and then all of the things that the teachers put in in addition to you know materials and supplies and all of that stuff, and they each have a binder with all of those things. So we're happy to show that to you, um, but they couldn't figure out a. Way An easy way. <laughs> like killing a million trees. So how do you analyze that? We, we went through every page. go through it, and I went through every single page with Tom, with the administrators. And there's a dollar cost associated? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they are in the budget as well. You know, in the, in the future, we should come up with something that's easily transferable into a spreadsheet. because This is what goes into our program for our budget. Okay. You know and, what I mean? And Brian, like I agree. What they, the teachers put it in electronically into the budget. Program. So it is going it's electronic. Yes, it is in our Envision software. Yes. And I and I agree with you because again, my initial, I love I love my uh, binders as, as much as anyone. But when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that is quite the binder. Yeah. And I love my spreadsheets, and it wasn't something that quickly and easily. It's all in the Envision software, and all the requests are there. But I, I think you're right. Looking forward future years how we can so everything's assigned a category though so if you have never seen this so I, I'm completely shoot with shoot mm -hmm. that here so I mean if I'm if I'm a teacher and I have my wish list items and I'm submitting mm -hmm. for, for the things that I need when I log in or do whatever I have to do I go in and I'm selecting this is a supply or this is yes. a something else mm -hmm. and so would we be able to well, I, I mean, I so there's different at... tabs. So the first tab is materials and supplies, for example. So mm -hmm. they get 125, whatever it is, you know, for the pencils, you know, the net, the, the you know, the little right. stuff, right? Then there's the tab conferences and mileage. Then there, I don't know what the other tab is. Then there's a tab wish list, mm -hmm. literally, you know, and then that's all the other stuff that anybody would ever want for. Um, nothing was pulled out of there. And the music department did put in $50,000 for, um, uh, <clears throat> help me, stage lighting. Um, that is not in there, because we're trying to figure out how we're going to do that, you know, in the, either those $100,000 outlays or in a project or whatever, obviously. That is the only thing that was touched. The teachers go in, they put it in, they submit it to the principals, the principals look at it, they just look you know, submit it as is. They print it out for us so that we can have a conversation so we're not all around one screen. Um, although we probably can do that in the future now that I have the projection screen in there. And we all sat down together and went through every single page, but we didn't do anything about it. If you look at the books and we're happy to give them to you, you will see that, like in Carl's book, I wrote notes. You know, like, this is out of textbook. You know what I mean? Like, they have to move some things. They're, like, in the wrong columns. You know, because we have to spend all our textbook money so we get eight. So software is now part of textbooks. So some of the things between us, it was like, no, you should move this to this line, this should be moved to this line. that was put right. into the software program was put in there except for the $50,000 lights. Right. So do we have a dollar amount wish list items that are um, here? It says everything requested for future wish list. So all of this, do we have a dollar amount at all respect to um, materials and supplies? It's all, right, it's all rolled into materials and supplies. So when you take a look at materials and supplies, it includes not only wish list, plus you. It includes not only the wish list items, but includes all the other supplies to run the departments as well. So it's not just wish list. So I don't have just a breakout just of wish list. Break down what this budget year cost is for those items and 
Yeah, for spice materials, we can certainly take a look what were spice materials last year versus this year, absolutely, but it won't necessarily give you the breakdown just for the wish list, because there aren't budget codes just for the wish list. Because wish list isn't necessarily, it, it's still academic supplies, it's still stuff that comes out of our regular budget, so I think that's how that's set up. I've not gone in and put anything in myself. So. Right. And but I, if we can't see it without physically going into the office and reviewing a binder, that doesn't... Well, he can give it to you. We, yeah, which absolutely. binders do we have? Can you leave them? They can look at every executive yeah. session. Tonight. Absolutely. So I'll bring I'll bring you the high school and you guys can take a look. If there's That's a better way see. next year, we have the one. They're all in yours. If there is a better way next year, we certainly can take a look at it. So again, my first year. So again, seeing that large book, I'm like, okay. So I don't know a better way at this point other than allowing everyone to say, here's the binder, feel free to take a look. So if there's another way to break down, I thought it'd be a simple, okay, add a tab for high school social studies, add a tab for high, uh, high school math. Well, it wasn't that way because it's by every teacher. So it would have been very cumbersome to open up a spreadsheet and look at all the tabs for every single teacher. So if there's an easier way, we certainly can look at that. In this slide, Tom, yeah. we have the issue of full-time principal. Yes. We must have a number of budget. What is it? 100000 for the salary. And then the benefits are in Correct. Yep. And then you have the two teachers, a special ed and a math teacher. Mm -hmm. You have those budgeted at step one. Yes. And then the three full-time teacher aid. With them. Okay. For the teachers, yep. Full-time teacher aid, what do you have that budgeted at our lowest aid? At the lowest aid, uh, lowest paid teacher aid, and um, no help. Because we are going to update you in the near future that um, we and many other districts are talking about that, and there is a way to hire them. They're going to, there is a way to hire them as permanent subs and not have to incur the benefits. So we will get back to you at a future time with specifics, but we are in conversations with many other districts. So same thing right now. But we have put a placeholder for their salaries in the budget. But not their benefits. The two A's. The, the three A's. A's. Yep. So, just so I'm clear on the number two. Yes. <clears throat> in our previous budget, meaning last, this month. Yes. Earlier yes. this yes. month. Yes, what was this one? Um, we had three... What was the dollar figure for three full time with benefits? I would have. Did we say? Uh, we looked at AIDS, and I would have to pull that up again. It without looking, it's about forty-five thousand for the salary. Person. No, but with benefits, it was it was well, it was, over two, it was over two it was over two hundred thousand dollars for three people. That was for teachers. Correct. Certified Correct. teachers. Correct. Correct. Step one. We have AIDS was a different mm -hmm. story. But when, like I'm, when I'm when I'm thinking about for the these numbers here, where we have two plus principal, that number is. Assuming that they're, you know, they're full times. So you're talking again? So I'm sorry, I, I, she said something at the same time yeah. you did, so I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to think of the number that's associated with it. That's all. So the aides were salary-wise forty-five thousand dollars, and then the associated benefits, except for health care, the teachers and the principals were their salary plus benefits, including health care. So the only one who doesn't have health care are the aides. But if they're working so thirty hours or more, we're obligated. Healthcare, and I don't That's the discussion with other districts right now and how they're approaching that. Depending on how they're hired, they're just going to be almost like a temporary position. No, it wouldn't. Multiple districts already have. We will get you the specifics and let you know. Okay, and still, again, looking at last year's budget to this one, always one of the places that we look at our utilities. Uh, fortunately, gas has been going down. We don't necessarily see an increase coming anytime soon, so we try to, to budget as realistically as possible, still making sure that we have enough there if it were to go up slightly. Um, looking at unemployment insurance, um, again, and other you know, fuel and utility budgets as well to make sure they're exactly where they should be. With the reserves, one of the things, and, and um, I, I'm a big believer, and I've certainly this is um, board prerogative, one of the things that we've included is, is a best practice from 
the state controller's office if you have reserves and um, you've asked people to phone those reserves, you should be using them with some regularity. So not just to sit in, in the accounts, but to actually use them in your budget. So we actually have in here, you'll see $50,000 from the uh, retirement reserve to cover a portion of the upcoming ERS bill. And one of the things that I always look at, and I've been through several OSC audits, and one of the things you sometimes get dinged on is you have the reserves, you don't touch them. If they see that you're using them, even if you put the funds back in, they're very pleased with that because you are actually actively using your reserves, which is what they're there for. So at uh, for this coming year, using $50,000, the hope is at the end of the year, looking at where we end, um, that we would put 50000 back into the reserve as long as we end with the money. Okay. Question. Yes. The reserve is based on the amount of money we need to have to pay off the ERS bill, so the support staff uh, for their retirement cost. So we have a budget line for ERS every single month, mm -hmm. every single every year. year. Mm -hmm. But are we not supposed to have so much in this reserve? You can have anywhere from three to five times your annual bill in that reserve. That's what the OIC recommends. So, what is our bill? Uh, it's about, and I'm not looking at it, so my apologies, it's about 200000 have we have about 200,000 yeah I mean we're probably he can't, he can't whisper you gotta speak he up. feels it's a little under we're probably yeah he feels it's underfunded we probably could put more in that reserve and he still be safe to sufficient. go along with the recommendation of anywhere between three to five years but yet you want to take 50,000 out of it and hope we have money at the end of the year to put it back in correct because if you don't touch it the OSC does have a problem if you just keep putting money in and show no use whatsoever so yes and so if they have a problem with it, what will that do to us? They're going to ding us and say, oops. You Correct. I mean, we had we had thousands and thousands of dollars in our unemployment reserve, and no one ever dinged us, and we never used it. True. Thousands. Never used it. But now we want to take it and lower a reserve lower than the balance that we should have in there. But again, actively work to make sure you're rotating and putting money back in. The so Tom is new, and Tom feels that this is the proper thing to do, which it is. Okay, and you're right. What are they going to do to us? Like on the wrist. But these are all the factors that go into that fiscal stress, too. So it's not that they haven't looked at it or dinged us a little, but it wasn't enough to have us fall below, you know, having zero points, you know, designation. Do we need to take the money out to pay our bills at the end of this year? Because if not, then why are we doing it? Do we think we're that tight that we need to take it out? You should be in every budget using a portion of it. it. It's good cash management. So even let's say when you go to borrow for your upcoming capital project and they take a look at it, it shows that you're using your uh, fiscal management wisely when you're trying to refusing and putting that money, you can manage the money. So, so it's actually showing um, prudent cash management. So if, if you don't ever touch it, it doesn't show that you're using it properly. You should be able to take it out, put it back in, and you should be actually showing that you're doing that. So if you're just taking it out with no plan to put it back in, there's a problem. So if you consistently see your reserves go down and not built back up at all, then of course they're gonna look at that too and say they can't manage your money. Almost like debt service. So you have to have level debt service as well. Uh, so you have money that's coming off of debt service, you have money that's going on debt service. So that rolls just as your reserves roll as well. What, same, same what the controller's office wants to see, and correct me if I'm wrong, they wanna see you take that 50,000 out just throwing out a number on your appropriated budget mm -hmm. and then at the end of the year replenish it. They want to see money going out and money going back in. To show that you can handle that and manage the money. Yes, correct. And also the taxpayers, they're not just putting money in without any need of it whatsoever. So Dave, what is that? <laughs>
there a way to turn that mic off? One of them is picking up something. Something. Test, test, test. Is that one on? No, this one's down. I'll turn these down. We're off. Uh, I'm on. I'm going to turn. Is turn Bonnie's off. <laughs> okay, so where were we? Just what I was saying is that the controller's office wants you to see, wants to see you use reserves and replenish, and put the money back. Yes. Uh, it, it almost seems. Why do you do that? But but if right. you don't, then they they as well as um, standard pours Moody's they say as well. You're not being as prudent as you can be and watching over your finances and, and working with them. So like we're supposed to have it there to cover our bill, God forbid. We mm -hmm. don't have the money, but we're really appropriating it in our budget, so we should take it out of there to pay it and then, of course, put it back in so we get that savings just in case we have to pick it up. Is it essentially the story? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And as you see, there is a footnote on the bottom as well. Again, the intent is at the end of the year, uh, the recommendation would be to refund that reserve first before looking at other ones. Okay, so expenditures and looking moving forward. Okay, so BOCI services, uh, what we've accounted for here, we've already, and this is still a work in progress, we've already uh, looked at the increases for proceeds for the coming year, as well as some of the anticipated need for student placements in there. Uh, we are actually, and, and budgets are a living, breathing document. It changes, could be every single day, depending on what happens. We're sitting down with Erie One BOCES tomorrow to look at some of the services actually through there. So that number could change a little bit as time goes on. Uh, but that's where we're at at this point. Uh, contractual salaries. Uh, looking at the increase there, so uh, we knew that this year that we were going to definitely be tighter and that there was a need to hire additional staff this year just in general, and there was. So not all of them necessarily had been budgeted in the prior year because we just couldn't foresee everything that had to be done. Um, and you guys saw that over the summer. You saw some of the staffing changes there as well. So from budget to budget, you'll see a higher number on the budget to budget because we didn't have to necessarily budget for them all last year. Uh, debt service. This one here, as I said, you are seeing the increase there, and that's probably one of the largest lines that you're seeing the increase from because the debt from this past capital project is on. Yes, we retired some debt, but that uh, is now on. Uh, health insurance, we certainly do not have final rates at this point in time, but we budgeted about a 5% increase. Um, right now, our brokers are saying that that looks reasonable uh, given it, uh, where we're at. Other, so this is your supplies, your materials, this is uh, your transfers to other funds, um, this is your capital outlay project, all the other stuff that doesn't fit into one of the other categories that you see. Um, ERS and TRS, and actually what you've seen is that is actually decreasing a little bit. Um, so. This is getting a little bit tighter, and I will tell you that right now. So we are trying to budget as realistically as possible. Uh, rates are going up just a little bit, so we're going to have to watch that one and see when final rates come out. Uh, Social Security, obviously with the increase in salaries, we're going to have a little bit more in Social Security and the other benefits. Special Ed tuition, this is just the two lines for um, district placement and private placement. Utilities, as I said, we really looked at those and tried to um, be as realistic as possible, still making sure that we're able to cover that, uh, but to bring that down a little bit as well. And workers' comp and insurance um, with a slight increase in there as well. So that you'll see. Yes? One question again. Can you tell me what is the other line made out of? Okay, supplies, materials, transfer to other funds. Um, so let's see. What do you mean transfer to other funds? Why would that be in an other line? Uh, so anything that is not one of the other lines you see here, something that's not BOCES, not contractual salaries, not debt service. So this is the same format you guys have for the couple of years with the breakout that you've had uh, for the past several years. And every district has a breakout a little differently, but you've earmarked these categories that you want to see. So you want to see all the BOCES lines. You want to see all your debt service lines. So you've grouped them over the years into those categories. Then you have 
everything else that's not one of those categories. So your supplies, materials, capital outlay. So those things that you don't have in specific categories. All the other ones you have in very specific categories. So we could ask to have it broken down a mm -hmm. little better in you the can. future going forward. You absolutely can. It's your budget. Yeah. Right. Yep. We absolutely can. So that's not a problem. I'll make a note of that. I might take a little bit of doing because every single line is earmarked with code on it. So let me, I'll take a look in that and see. So if we can break that out more now, we will. If not, in future. Or, I mean, if, if he gave us like the top three or four the items, biggest one, the, the biggest ones yeah. that are in there, and then other. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look at it. Again, it's your budget, so absolutely. Okay. So overall, at this point in time, you're looking at a 7.67% increase. Is that where we're going to end the year? No, but this is the starting point. On the revenue side, you guys have seen some of this from our previous presentation, but just to take a look at it, um, one of the things here that we looked at, you guys last year had used um, a fund balance of 400000 we have actually put that in the presentation here, uh, keeping it at the 400000 It is in our software right now. Usually by the end, when you adopt a budget, that line, that 400000 will come out of the financial software. It just doesn't go in there. The difference is what you're using from fund balance. But it's here just to show you guys. Um, so um, Medicaid. The Medicaid line, it's showing it's going down. It's not actually going down. The governor likes to put in the state numbers their portion of the Medicaid line. So the other half is in the state line. So it's actually a little higher in the state line, a little lower on the Medicaid. Uh, miscellaneous, that's things like continuing ed, uh, tuition from districts, uh, BOCES rental, uh, prior year refunds and transportation services. Uh, property uh, tax levy. So what we're looking at this point, as we've seen CPI is at 2%. So we have budgeted at this point 2%. There will also be um, a small growth factor that we will also be entitled to every year that the state will uh, tell us that amount. Um, and we have no exclusions this year, so that's the only other factor that we're probably going to be seeing different. Uh, one of the things I'm sure you guys are, are well familiar with, by March 1st, that number for the tax levy has to be filed with the state by the 1st, even well before we're done with the budget. Um, that makes it very difficult for us as we're planning our budget and the appropriations to lock in um, at the tax levy before we know the full picture and exactly what the state budget's going to be because we won't know that until April, but we have to lock in by March 1st. Well, so we can change that, yes. If you change that, you do have to refile with the state. So yes, you can, but you would need to refile. And what they do want to know, and I would have to take a look, if you override the tax cap, that would be a problem. Right. So they want to know if we're going to supersede the tax Absolutely. Cap. Mm -hmm. So is what must, most districts, uh, let me try to speak, what most <laughs> districts do is they put in with the state what their maximum allowable is stay under the tax cap. And then when the budget, when we nail down the budget number, then that number is reduced because the 2% is not truly 2%. 2% is never 2%. Even right. our 2%, which is here, won't end at 2%. Right. But you're right. And then So that's what we would probably do because March is early. It's very early. And then you just refile with them and say, okay, they let's say it's 2.15. So you put in 2.15 with, with your growth factor and everything, you decide to do 2.12, then you just refile with the state and, and say instead of 2.15, we went 2.12. Is there a deadline for that to happen? No. But they want to know by March 1st, definitely, Is if they're going to go over the year? Mm. No. You're supposed to every year file any updates you have to that. We always file it. I just don't know if we knew that we could change it or anything. Yeah. It's a problem if you decide to go above the tax cap. That becomes a problem. We don't, we did that much. So we don't to do that. Sales tax, uh, again, if you took a look at our long range forecast that we had at a previous uh, meeting, 1% right there. State aid, um, one of the things the state uh, aid runs came out, we actually looked very good. A couple points to look at um, our foundation aid, 
uh, was 1.67% increase, which is actually good. When you start taking a look at where we are in terms of foundation aid that we've received over the years, you have some districts who definitely have not received the full amount that they should have over the years, and you have some districts who have definitely at least received the full amount, if not more. We fall into the second category, so we've at least received the aid that was supposed to be due to us. So we're on the good side. Uh, so when you look, pay us any of the money that they took back, though. Well, no, but that's no. Okay. Not, let's not get crazy here. Uh, but when you take a look at it, though, and say our situation, as opposed to some districts who are millions behind where they actually should be, um, there are some districts who received like a. 0.2% increase in their foundation aid, and they have not been made whole yet. So when you take a look at our 1.67, we did okay, um, which is really good to see. The one area, and, and Brian and Kelly, I already alerted you guys to this as well, that um, appears when you look at it is maybe we will not receive the full amount is when you take a look at what our transportation aid is uh, projected for the coming year. Um, it is definitely higher than where we're at this year. So we're in the 900 range now, and they're projecting in somewhere about the 1.1 range next year. Part of that's based on projections. And what you need to do is take a look at that, those projections, and analyze and say, does that actually make sense? Do you think that's actually going to come in? So unless something radical has changed, should you expect hundreds of thousands of dollars more? And when we took a look at it, if our fleet hasn't really changed, if our routes haven't really changed, should we expect you know that much more? And you know, checking, we really haven't changed anything. So looking at the A projections for transportation, they seem overinflated. And at least in booking for the coming year, what we did for the revenues, we booked what we had last year. If we get more, that's a great place for us to actually be. But if you were to project exactly what they put in, and you're under by a couple hundred thousand, you have some real problems. So we went conservative on that and looked at this here. So this 10.8 is your conservative number. Mm -hmm. Technically, we could be higher. You could be higher. By? Uh, 200,000. Roughly. Uh, roughly. And again, that's a great place to be, but there is nothing that shows we should expect that number to come through. And again, when you're looking at budget starting, you're better off doing that than the other way around. Okay, so. High cost transportation, maybe? So when you take a look as a whole, our budget is up 6.32%. If you pulled out the 400,000, which we included, it would be lowered, being the four range, and that's further in the presentation. Uh, so when you take a look at that, you obviously see there's a gap between the spending and the revenues. Okay, okay overall, what are we looking at? Um, there is a deficit, which at this point in the budgeting process is not a surprise. Um, so the appropriations or the spending is at 20.969. The revenues are 20.282, or a difference of $686,000. How does that stand with prior year's budget? Um, at this point in time, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I'm sorry about, about that. Same. Seven, I, eight, I, eight, we're it's, usually it's, seven, eight. Yeah. That, that was my that was my gut on it. Maybe I, eight right. fifty. You know, it's yeah. he has a good point. Okay. Yeah. And I will definitely tell you, I've seen some districts who start out in the two plus range. We're, we're actually not in a bad situation. So no one likes to see a deficit, for sure, but. The one thing that, that may just to be considering, so the, you used to have the governor's budget would come out with his mm -hmm. recommendations, mm -hmm. and then you'd have the legislatures, and typically in, in the past years, that final number would come out somewhere in the middle. Do you think that the, le is the legislature published a number yet? They have not. So, but they won't. Is that going to be probably pretty aligned with the governor's? Because, oh, Brian, you're asking me to look at my crystal ball and actually make the prediction just, on that. Um, someone told me a long time ago. Writing this in the paper. Right. Someone told me a long time ago, as a financial person, I should never say that because, again, um, if I'm wrong on that, so I'm very careful not to actually say that. Um, 
what I've seen done in the past is if you budget, looking at just the governor's number and you budget just for that, and then you have additional wish list items in April, you can always bring those back in right. and add additional program. Right. So I've always approached and that's, that way. that's the way we've done it in the past, but yes. there was, in prior years, there mm -hmm. was a, a fairly substantial range. I would as assume <laughs> that those numbers will be much closer this year because if you take a look at the government structure now, the fact right. that it is Democratic going across the board, I think they're probably going to be more closely aligned to where he's at right now. It's not an election year. You're probably not going to see a huge difference in that. So I would probably agree with, with what you're thinking on that one. Um, you weren't supposed to agree. <laughs> but I didn't give a number, though. <laughs> okay. So, But I, I would think it'd be probably tighter this year than, in, let's right. say, in an election year. Right. There you probably would see a lot more coming. Okay, so leading to the summary and some of this we've already talked about, final state aid allocation, exactly what we were just talking about, still to come. Um, so we budgeted again on the conservative side on that, hoping that we'll get more uh, in the final uh, analysis. Uh, BOCES expenses, as I said, work in progress. We're meeting with them tomorrow. Final tax levy, which will be against slightly over 2.0, won't be huge, but it'll be close to that and we're at the two now. Um, with the budget additions, we're at the 2% for the cap. Uh, we have put into place those three permanent teacher aides, uh, the one math teacher, one special ed teacher, um, looking at bringing classroom furniture back to levels from 17, 18. Uh, to what does that mean? Because I thought we were using them back. No, uh, increasing, be so keeping up that level spending of replacing furniture in all the classrooms. No, we had we always had a seventy thousand dollar budget those first that first year, two years, and last year we dropped it down to twenty to balance the budget. Which might happen again this year, for all we know. But, but so we also then at the end bringing it back to seventy. Correct. Yeah. Not there. Hmm? Not there. That is those three teacher rates. Those are the permanent. Uh, those are the when permanent the subs. When the administrative team met and input from the teachers, they would prefer to have a real math teacher and a real special education teacher as opposed to permanent sub teachers. That was the feeling. And then still help the classrooms out by putting three permanent positions in there. So yes, to answer your question, that's exactly what that's in response to. Hang on, so I need to make sure I really understand this. So the math teacher and the other one that's in here are the principal special ed. <clears throat> so we looked at, or we were presented with two, diff two different options. One was to hire three certified general teachers that could do, I guess, whatever. Or, just, or three just subs, subs, right? Yeah, just okay, subs. so right, so they, that, that would be a, a certified whoever, wherever it we need you for that day. Right? Okay, so. So we looked at three certified teachers versus three aides. And then um, in here, we're saying that we're going to hire a math and a special ed and then three aides on top of it. Because we felt that with the amount of money that would be for the three subs for $18,000, you can have subs sub every day of the year here and no benefit as opposed to having hiring the subs at the sub teacher. The teachers strongly strongly, strongly feel that we are short a special education teacher and a math teacher. Who do the teachers suggest that we get to replace them if we don't have subs? So if we're, if we're missing subs and we have principals going into the classrooms, how, what is the plan? I mean, we're short teachers, technically so we're teachers. So I'm going to say to you that three teachers are not going to solve your sub problems. Well, and I think during our round table we're going to have more discussion on, at least, at least I intended have a little bit more discussion on the substitute issue. Um, no solutions, in full disclosure, no solutions. Well, but um, if I had it, I'd you know, be contracted by every school district in the state to fix our problems. But, um, but I, we, we have to have more discussion on this. Um, right, and I all agree we with did here for the budget was to try to determine how to better best spend the money. We have student needs. We feel that the student needs are, are necessary for a math teacher and a special ed teacher. Um, we certainly can look at three subs or three aides, but to balance this budget and to be at the less than $700,000 difference, 
what we came up with was that we have the three subs as opposed to putting three more teachers in, so in addition to the two we're hiring. So rather than three subs, you, you added three, two, two, uh, teachers. two special ed teachers, correct? Yes. Uh, no, one no, special ed teacher, one math. one math teacher, and three permanent aides. Do we have to take any action on this presentation? No. 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 Okay, so no. Yeah, this just, budget is, okay. is yeah. not until yeah. April. We'll just move on, and, and then we can have that discussion yeah. when it, until April. at the right place. This is just part of the, the budget. And again, this is just a first blush at, at this. Uh, it's a process. So, so the whole team came together and said, how do we address the needs as a whole? You know, get teachers where they were specifically needed while still addressing the concern that the board had. So again, just the starting point there. Perfect. We can always take a look at that. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Um, also included here, wish list items. So those are all in here as well. Um, as well as the student supplies, the, the board student supplies that were included last year are back in here again. That is at about $75,000 for that as well. So that, that does not include the calculators? Yes, it, it does. does include the calculators. Yes. So what they've done is there's about $15,000 in each building, and this high school building is about forty five dollars because of the calculators. Now, um, I think it's too. I think this is. I think we should just pay for the calculators and make the parents pay for the supplies. Just saying. So those are conversations, just yeah, like the one that you're talking about yeah, that you yeah. need to have. Do you, do you know what I mean? That's what's ongoing here. Yep. And we just did what we could. And figure out to bring some. Literally, after I'm done with this page, I turn it over to you guys for the wish list because we've talked about that and, and we haven't heard yet to see what you guys want for the wish list. So we will be coming back more to this, but just to or kind of... Or you might need more specifics back right. from us. Right. To, to get a Absolutely. Um, so we've also, as I said, looked at contractual increases, healthcare increases, both service requests, um, learning and technology initiative, continuing that, uh, along with PD and then aligning that with the goals. Um, and then looking at student needs. So everything that we were doing with the budget, and, and yes, this is the only place we've seen the word student needs in here. Everything that we've done should be with that end in mind. And so I, I can't reiterate that enough, and it should be on almost the last page, but uh, that was what the focus was. So when you take a look at it, uh, you know, when you see here with the balanced budget, um, and looking towards the balanced budget, the increase in expenditures, 7.67, revenue, 6.32. Obviously, a gap. We will obviously take care of that before the end of the budget process. Um, if you look at the revenues without the 400000 or the appropriated fund balance, it's more like 4.23. So you see why the gap. Um, okay. So, first of all, questions, which you guys already have plenty, but if there are additional ones, please let me know. And then I want to turn it over to you guys because we have talked about what your wish list wants are for this budget process. We haven't really had a chance for that, and I want to make sure that we actually do, and I will be your scribe. So you just let me know what the topics are, and I'll make sure I take those down. Okay, and if you go too fast, I'll let you know. So let me turn it over to you guys. On the... I'm not budgeting the benefits for the aides. I'm not comfortable with. Neither am I. Um, nope. Okay. I just, you know, we want long-term good employees, you know, that we treat well, and to just, you know, assign them at 25 hours for the purposes of, of not paying benefits. Like I just probably will not support. So which, which is just, which is not a problem. So what we'd no, be looking just at. Has to add to the it, it would be roughly 19,000 times three, right. obviously, and that's not a problem. It is a strategy several districts are using right now, um, and that's not a problem. You know, it may at some point get to that point, but yep. I, like, I, I don't want it to start there. Yep. Just my two cents. Okay, hold on one second. Yep. They may not take it. They, they, they may not. No, but no, it. but he just needs. But to I get need it a budget for it. Right. Sure it's in the yep. budget. Right, and we'll be back in there. Okay, not a problem. Anyone else? I want floating teachers. I, I really want to hear from teachers to tell me that they do not want floating teachers. That they want aides. I really cannot believe anyone's going to say that if your teacher's going to be out for a week, she's ill or whatever else, and you want to put a different teacher every single day in that classroom to you know sub to fill in. At least if you had a permanent sub, you could advance tell her what you need to do get it done i i guess i don't understand how it works but an aide cannot teach classroom so if the teacher's not there 
Who cares if we have an aid or not? We Where wouldn't we put the aid in specifically for the sub. The aid is to have a floating aid in each building so that any extra needs the teachers have, we can help. The aids are, the aids are for it's extra not to be, students. It's, it's got not to do with to our be, classrooms no, it's, being short. It's not for students. That's one of the problems here. Every aid that we have is assigned to a student. We do not have any aids here that just can be available to okay, do so if we need anything more, that we If we need more aids, though, that's great. We need more aids. But we were told that we needed more teachers. That was how the conversation came, that we needed more teachers. We, and how we, do we want to fix it? Like, we, if you're saying we don't need teachers, then I'm good. No, we don't. I don't know what you're talking about, just general, we don't need teachers. We need a special ed teacher and we need a math teacher. That is something that's been determined by the administrative staff and the teachers. Permanent teacher subs, so that we're very clear, can have any certification. I don't know how we hire them and get, we have to see what the law looks like because you only get tenure in a certified area. And that, if you want them to be subs, it's just like our subs that come in that are certified. They can go into any classroom, but they might be in chemistry and they're an English teacher. So, but they but can only be here for 40 days, correct? The, the subs, yes, yes, at the current time. So, so if we hired a, a permanent, uh, permanent subs. Teachers, you're talking. Teachers. Uh, they can be here all year. They can be here all year. Right. But again, it's about. three so, people, and on any given day, you have so these are two six to twelve people out. Separate issues. The the need yes. for a math teacher and the need separate. for a special education teacher are two totally and and the subs are different than our yeah, two issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Three permanent building subs is the request that I've heard from some of our staff. That's with building subs. That's what they were, they're referring to these, I guess, what would be teacher aides as? I, I, I don't understand. You know, if, if we don't have the ability to provide instruction for whatever the particular subject is, on that day when that teacher is out, it's a it's a sunk day. It's a lost day, right? Yeah. They don't so the instruction. so. And and again, I don't. I, I'm I'm just throwing ideas out there, but it almost seems like we need to have a a centralized study hall in every single building for those days when teachers are out, where the students re, would report to that study hall, and then you accommodate you could potentially accommodate multiple teachers being out because you would send students to that auditorium or to that cafeteria or to something that is a large room where instead of going to insert subject here because the teacher's out, they would go to this study hall room instead. Second grade, they don't leave the classroom, so what are you gonna do? Well, I understand that, and I think Wait, that's a totally me, separate thing. I wanna make but, sure I understand. Explain to me, what do you mean, so they go to that large venue with a permanent teacher sub is that what you're well, saying well with so, whether it's whether it is a permanent teacher sub or if we ask our teachers to on a rotating basis somebody you know take different periods or whatever throughout the day you know i i'm just throwing ideas out there i'm not saying right perfect, so here's but. my question for you with that so let's say instead of a class our, and our classes are pretty small around here so let's talk high school mm -hmm. right Let's say that we have 40 kids in one room with a permanent sub teacher, certified or uncertified. You get my point. How is that being helpful to that class? Because they're probably not certified in the two or three classes those kids are coming from. But they're covering a study hall that would have normally been... Three subs. Would, would have been covered by a, a teacher. Is the idea How is that, that a... good for kids? So I'm going to take that back as a classroom teacher and say to you that if I have a sub who, and I leave succinct plans, my kids are getting something out of that 41 minutes and in their big study hall that may not be abs happening. Absolutely, assuming, that, assuming, that, we, assuming that we have that. But we have no contingency plan and we're putting our principals in the classrooms. And that's not, that to me is, that's not fair to our principals. And I also don't think that that's something that we should be, and it's probably not routine and it was, it, it was probably not only, but it, I, 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 if we have certified teachers, we have we have a lot of non-certified teachers who are who are on our on our sub list. 
like three to one is what I got out of that. So if they're a non-certified teacher, there's probably good reason why they're not, but how many of these people have masters in education? How many of these people have either ever been certified, maybe they let it go, they're retired, I don't know if that's the way that it works or not. But when we have a three to one ratio of non-certified versus certified teachers, you cannot tell me that there is learning going on when we're using non-certified people, that there's, that there's the same education that a, a non-certified person is providing the same type of education that a certified teacher would be who is in that classroom. They're not, but I guess I'm still trying to understand the whole mass study hall. How is that any better? If the teachers Ooh. leave plans for a substitute, and let's say I'm called in, say my specialty is English, mm -hmm. when I'm called into a math class, right. there are lesson plans yep. that subs, when they interview, they're told you do the best job you can with the detailed plans that you have. Okay, if it's uh, when the kids have to do, say, a worksheet, let's yeah. say the kids have to do reading, or whatever it may be, you're still going to run into that situation whether you've got a sub that's certified or not. I think that there are probably fewer cases when, even with good sub plans, that it's fruitful. And that when the teacher comes back, they probably have to. There's no take way step it's back. the same as yeah, when the yeah, teacher. Yeah. I'm not looking for not even even here. The but only way that could happen is if we had two chemistry teachers, two biology te right. two subs, and they were all subs, and we could actually push and, them in the again, classroom. And again, I'm not looking for that. Yeah. But I really. I think the point of it is, is we want to keep the instruction going. Right. And That's the point. As do we. And I thought, and I thought we that, like we talked said, about it. Right. Work that way. Right. If we have right. to do a sub, if we have to do a study hall, a large study hall, I'm going to be taking teachers from a, another duty, let's say, so they can help supervise that full-time aid that I have. It's in there with 40 kids or 50 kids, because they have one person in there with 50 kids or 45. That's right. not a good situation either. Whether it's in the cafeteria or whatever. More than one Listen, we're looking for ideas, and yeah, this is good conversation. It it's is. just, I don't know what this looks like logistically. Right. And, and kind of my idea of the, the permanent sub is that you have. So, say we asked for this number before, and our average number of subs is it six or eight or something like that on, on an everyday basis? Does that sound? It's yeah. about right. It's a lot. Okay. Could be more. So if we had three, at least we got three fixtures and we're only trying to fill in the other three to five. I'm with you on Okay, right. If I have people that I can pull from that I know are going to be there because... Because they're here. Like, they're showing up. And I mean, if we do need... A, so say we there's a, that miraculous day where we have no call-ins, no subs needed. Well, then, you know, you can allow somebody to... to you know, use them where another teacher is doing additional duty and, and uh, maybe use them to do, uh, you know, tutoring or something like that, something, you know, that was kind of what I had in mind. But you can't do that out of the school day. No. But this a lot of things but it would be do. in the school day. Right. So you're probably looking at 200 plus thousand dollars to have the three teachers with the with the benefits, you know, I mean, those are the things that have to be right. talked about. And maybe they can fill three of the three to six or nine positions we have a day. So in addition to that, you still have the sub salaries. That, that's all I'm saying here. Right. Uh, but believe me, I, we, we would want nothing more than to have to go into the classrooms and cover and have the, the real teacher who can almost replace the teacher at hand, you know, to right. get the job done. But do we get feedback from our teachers at all about substitutes that they have, and do we have a, a mechanism for evaluating? We do. And we do. So and sometimes forth. people don't want somebody back, or we don't call them back ever. Information right. about their class when they went. And uh, I tell you, sometimes the, the best evaluators are the kids themselves. Yeah. <laughs> really, where they will let you know how the day went and stuff like that. So. so is one of the ideas of the aids, the three building aids, <laughs> would, would that be 
to use them for like testing accommodations. And to, just to, not specific to a kid, but to use for test modification, to use for teachers who need extra assistance, a teacher who's doing a, a special project, for teachers who want to have a couple of groups of kids and they need another hand in there, for teachers who need materials and supplies made for them for whatever reason, more in the elementary, right? They, they, they use them to do those types of, we don't have an extra set of hands in any building to do that. I almost that. think we're talking about two different things. It is two different yeah, things. We're not talking about subs. Yeah, teacher's wish list. That should be a teacher's wish list, and we would like right. aids that we can use whatever we want. Well, that's why we when put we, it in the budget. When we went at the budget, when we talked, this was we're short teachers. So we came back with, all right, what's the dollar amount? You know, if we're short teachers, that's what we need to have. If we need more teachers, now we come back that there's a special ed and, and math that was not brought to us that we want a special ed and math teacher. We were just said, we have heard repeatedly that you don't have enough teachers in Holland. That when not the teachers are out sick. So if they're out sick, what is your best scenario how to cover them? Are you talking real, I mean, regular staff teacher, or are you talking we don't have enough subs? Those are two different subjects. So if tomorrow six teachers call in sick, so you're you talking can, about you can subs. only get four subs to come in, what do you do with the two that are missing? You put him and him in it. So if tomorrow there's more than we have to cover with these guys here, what do we do? What do we physically do if there is not enough teachers to be in the classroom? What do you guys do? We pitch it, everything we can do. Other subs, meaning other sub teachers. That are already in here. Right. So they're already in for someone else. Right. So if you so, have four subs in the building, I'm looking at a teacher schedule and I'm finding their planning period. Okay, the sub is going to cover this period if I need that. So the other that, one's so going to go two periods. Well, so. if you have four, hopefully, if it all balances out, and it usually doesn't, then I look to eight. Then I say, okay, there's a testing assistant. She's, she's got a testing assistant period. There's nobody scheduled today. I'm pulling this aid to run a study hall for me. Instruction, or they do a study hall. So, yeah, and then sometimes I have to take the class, set them down in the library for a study hall because that's the biggest room that I can have the kids get in. Yeah, it's like I'm like a juggler sometimes, you know, and then I, I cover classes. Carl, between September 7th and Saturday, the council, how many periods? Because there's eight periods in a day. Eight teams never in there a whole day. Up the top of my head, maybe half a dozen. Half a dozen periods. Jason's done. Jason? Jason's done both buildings, so he's done more than that. He's got, he has more. I have more flexibility in the building that I'm in, in the high school. No, I'm not thinking first. He doesn't have that flexibility in the elementary school. Because I'm, you know, I so if you have a small AP Spanish class, you can just. Um, but so Jason's, covered, will have Jason's my head in the middle school, and he's the principal, and they're short. So now he goes into the classroom. So now a teacher has a problem with a student with discipline, sends him down the office. There's no principal. Every discipline doesn't require the principal's That's not my attention question. that my second. Is that that you send someone down. What would happen is, first of all, Jason or myself, when I'm down there, I'll get a call office while you're teaching the class well we would make sure that someone would come in and just supervise the class i would pull in either a teacher from the hallway or an aide just you know stay in here while i go down and figure out what's going on or if it's not a situation that the principal has to be at we have matt thormalin is the guidance counselor right. up there we have matt we have eric and that's what we do we don't so pull him class. out of the class from their class does that room. happen does that happen where i've been pulled out of a class yeah so out of that six times that you covered it, yeah. has it happened to you? Because you've been in more. I got one. Yep. <laughs> We've done stuff like that already. But there are a lot of subs that are on that list that choose not to work full time. 
I mean, right. I know of some of them that do not want to work right. here five days a week. They have young kids, they have right. their own business, whatever else. So they're always going to be on your sub list or choose to be on that list. From so, my, from my So one of the yeah one of the things that's happening across the districts here's where we should make a concerted effort as well. So people who sub, even certified teachers, they'll come to Holland for a few days. They go to East Aurora for a few days. They go to Iroquois for let's say for example, okay, um, because that's kind of how the system has been that nobody really just is typically in one district. What should happen is that they should be in one district for 40 days, and then we should swap them with East Aurora. Because they can't have more than 40 days in a district. Right. That's that would be I'm an sure intelligent that. thing for us to get together with other districts and try I was to just tell my have the conversation. Do. Right? Do, do you know what I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say? And then you'd, you could say, I only want certified subs. There's the pool of subs. Those ones come to Holland for those 40. But you know why that doesn't happen? Because I may not have work for them every single day. And, you know what I'm and saying. You, you may not have a full-time opportunity available at the end of that year, and another district might, and that's the way that you get your foot in the door. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I feel obligated to state the obvious just because, you know, this has been a, a lively conversation. In no way is any of this intended to be critical at all of the work that's going on here every day. We want to make a bad situation better for everyone. And so this is... You know, this isn't intended to be, you know, critical about anything. Uh, it is intended to be critical, but not of, of the people. And so we, we want to make this better. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little passionate about this because I really, you know, this is what ripples right out into the classroom. Um, and we don't want, we, you know, we want our students to get the good education. We don't want our staff to feel like they're getting, you know, kicked around all the time because that, that's grinding. And, and it doesn't matter if you're a teacher or what you do for a living, you you can't get kicked around like that. And it just seems like it's a hot mess. And so how about it. when he comes back to you with the next budget, he includes that 200 and whatever thousand dollars it is. He's going to break down that other category for you. And let's take another look. We'll try to look through it and see where what other areas we think we can bring to you and say, hey, maybe this is you know somewhere we can shave a little. I mean, if that's so a priority, that's a priority. Subs plus the math plus special ed because you do need those. Two I positions. do need those two positions. So it should be five positions. Yeah, I do need those so two positions. So the way I look, yeah. It's do you have how much we spend? I mean, I, I don't want it. Those are not yeah, two places we yeah, want to cut. I don't think salary, right? anyone, if you ask any of the teachers yeah, well, either, we don't want to cut that. And that math position will go where? We wrote middle school, high school. It depends how they develop the schedule. We have an, and we have a, a void in each area. And the, a, the, and the special same, ed will be going where? Special ed is probably going to come to the elementary school, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that for an additional classroom or that we have more? Somebody that we didn't anticipate. So you're talking like the consultant teachers. Yes. I gotcha. Just doing some really quick math here for you guys. So right now our deficit was 686,919. If I add in the additional health care benefits for the AIDS, that's about an additional 57,000, brings us up to about 743 and change. If I do the difference for the teachers, uh, and the difference there is about 149 instead of 57, that'll bring us up to a deficit of 835. So I can certainly put that is in. That's three teachers with benefits. That's three teachers two. instead of the aides. Oh, so okay. you get your two teachers, your math, your special ed, plus your three permanent teachers versus three aides. So you're either looking at right now where it's 686, you go to 743 if it's the AIDS with the health care benefits. You say you need the three AIDS also. So why don't you just put all the numbers in? You you know, you're always doing the worst case scenario, so you might as well put them all in now. Okay, you're going to be back over a million dollars at that point. And, and, and here, that's, I mean, take out the furniture. We'll be back right. under a million dollars. Right. So, 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 and here, that's what I want to say. If, if it, 
Then we're focusing on education, we're focusing on kids, and we're going to have to find other areas that we're going to cut. And you're right, it might be the furniture for starters, and who knows what other things. And the supplies. Maybe the school supplies. Well, you guys say... With the There's $100,000 right the point there. Is, we might be willing to go out to a budget if you're explaining to the people what we're doing. You know, look, at we need five more teachers, that's the reason why. And we need to explain that it's not because we put a middle school on and we need to prove that it's not because additional expense of middle school, it's because our students need this many more teachers and this is what our budget's going to cost. Yes. Everyone knows the numbers go up, but if they know we put in five new teachers and this is what's going to cost plus our three eights, when That's you, how you sell go. those five new teachers, you have to very distinctly say that they are for permanent substitutes. Be and well, everybody's heard, seen the papers. I would imagine that most people are pretty aware of the sub eight because no, right. you don't want to go out there and say I hired five new teachers because people are automatically going to attribute that to open a building, I, and I that is see. not the case. That is not the case. Okay, but I think it's a permanent mm -hmm. teachers are not permanent subs. They're permanent. They're regular, they're regular they're tenure track teachers. Tenure track. So in the budget for now, what I'll put in are the benefits for the aides, the health care benefits for the three aides, and I will add three teachers in with, with full salary and benefits. Yeah, that's our worst case scenario. Yep, okay. Okay. So that's a principal, a special ed, a math, uh -huh. plus three. Plus three aides, plus three, three teachers. Aids, plus, plus three, three aids, teachers. Plus teachers. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all leaving and here. And benefits with the same on aids. and the furniture and the seventy-five thousand in school supplies. Yes. Yes. And then we'll come back. Are there more? I hate to ask. Are there more? No, there's no more. You're done. You're done. We are done. You're done. You're done. No more. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to start to shake. <laughs> You'll be all right. I think we made Tom You'll sweat. You'll be all right. <laughs> all right. So, okay. All right, I've got my marching orders. I'll update those for you. Not a problem. Anything else for me? <laughs> no. Well, come, on, happy. come on, okay, I'm just going to send them over the edge. I, I'm just going to throw it out edge. that we had a very similar challenge for Mark last year. We said you could do this. And he figured it out. You got to do this, you got to do this. Did he figure it out? And you can't go up really? on taxes. So. Really? <laughs> Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, okay. Are we good? Are we? Uh, we're all set. Can we move? Well, we're all set. Let's just put it that way. Okay. <laughs> I have no more. Got nothing else. That should have been a discussion item. Administrators and supervisors reports. Tom, would you like to go first? Jason's I've got a, nothing. Jason's already got. You lost your spot. <laughs> Real quick, um, I wanted to thank the PTO because PTO is working on bringing a couple assembly programs to all three buildings, actually. Um, I also wanted to thank the PTO for purchasing the book, Have You Filled a Bucket Today, for the elementary school. All the classroom teachers got a copy of that, and we have some in circulation in the library, and that is to support our character ed program and PBIS over at the elementary school. So thank you for that. Um, Business First sent a photographer into the elementary building today visited about half a dozen classrooms for the school guides that's going to go out in the fall. Um, they haven't been here for, for a few years, so they wanted to come and see what we're doing. And we did have a shelter in place for a medical issue at the middle school today, right before dismissal, which resulted in buses leaving about 15 to 20 minutes early or late. But um, staff did a great job. So they, they followed procedure and protocol perfectly. Um, everyone's safe, so I wanted to, I'm going to call the family to follow up with the, the student who had the issue tomorrow to see how they're doing. But uh, the procedures that we have in place are working and working well. Question. Yes. When, when you have something like that where you're running 15 minutes behind, you send out one of those global connects? We did. Everyone we did. That goes so we sent the first one that went to middle school and high school parents. We were hoping that it wouldn't impact the elementary, but it did, so we sent another one just for the elementary. Okay. So we did. And so then that'll to be families. another thing, hopefully, on the yep. app, then people will know. Yep. Okay. So, Gabby, um, our coordinating nurse, um, reached out to me because, you know, of course, just as I left with the wake, um, I barely backed out of here and got the, no, you know, my phone alerts 911 call. I'm like, are you kidding? And Lynette called me right away and told me what it was. And I said to her, you're probably going to have to put a school messenger out, you know, depending on who's late, at least the high school and the middle school. And we really were hoping the elementary, but it unfortunately um, was impacted. But she said, Gabby's words, her email was, I just wanted to follow up with you. 
that I'm thrilled to be here at Helen, and I can't believe how smoothly these things go. Mm -hmm. So um, we were really happy about that. I guess in retrospect, maybe we could have just sent it out to everybody, anticipate that possibly, but you know how they are with the little kids. They usually want to know a little closer to time. Well, that's why we wanted to wait, especially yeah. with the elementary building. If, if there's not someone visible, they bring the kids back. Yeah. And so we wanted to be sure. We wanted to have a time frame because 15 to 20 minutes at 2 o'clock could have been a half an hour at, at 4. So we wanted to make sure that we had a but good But our estimate. staff was great. They really... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did a great job. They did a wonderful job. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, all right. So I guess I'm second. Um, the high school today, we were not in a shelter in place, but we were forced to kind of just wait for the buses because the middle school... Uh, had their shelter in place. Thanks a lot, Jason. But anyhow, um, we finished up Regents testing today. Uh, we had uh, one Regents exam that we had to administer because it was rescheduled from Friday due to the snow day. And State Ed put out a, um, a new rule for weather-related uh, cancellations during Regents week that you are allowed to administer the exam that was missed. The next day, with one stipulation, students start all at the same time, and uh, we did that. Now, January, typically, we have a smaller number of students that are testing. I think we had around 26 this year. Uh, some were challenging uh, exams uh, from past regions, and we tested uh, a number of our special education students, especially in ELA, because juniors and seniors, because we wanted to make sure that uh, if they could get through this writing intensive exam in January, it would free them up in June so they can concentrate on uh, another writing intensive uh, jam, uh, exam, U.S. history and or global, global history. Um, and we're scoring those exams the rest of this week. Final grades have to be submitted uh, by Wednesday after school, and then we will be posting them to the portal. And uh, I can give you an update on where we fell as far as our students, how many were tested, and uh, how well we did in the, the exams that uh, were administered in a, uh, the BOE uh, update. Uh, Kathy also wanted me to talk to you guys a little bit about students that ride snowmobiles to the high school and kind of what our procedures are and requirements that we have in place. In order for students who wish to ride, they first have to come to the office and complete a vehicle form in order to park on school property, provide uh, proof of insurance and proof of completion of a safety course to operate the snowmobile. And obviously they have to uh, follow all posted speed limit signs uh, in order to park on the property and they, they'll park in the back parking lot. An idea is being floated. Uh, Kathy wanted me to look at uh, drive your snowmobile to school day. Uh, and I've been working with Deputy Okel who put me in contact with uh, Tim Duza, I think that's how you say his last name, through the Sheriff's Department. Um, apparently he is a trainer and uh, they actually have a snowmobile squad in the Sheriff's Department. So uh, I'll see if they, if Tim can help us out doing something like that, whether they uh, monitor the, the cross areas where the, the trails, you know, as kids are coming to school you know, or they meet everyone that is planning to ride and they all ride in together. I mean, we'll uh, try to pull something together before the snow uh, melts. And uh, hey, Holland is definitely a snowmobile town. Look at all the snow that we have. So, Kelly, and more is coming. Has, so, um, like, would that be a, a contact maybe for Carl just to get the message out and in fact a good day is or a good Sure, because you could, if you, you know, if you decide to do something like that, you could get the volunteers to sit at any of the road crossings to cross. But, you know, Perfect. if they have an insurance certificate to drive, they're good to go. So they already know how to cross. Okay. You know, other than, 16 is the only road that you don't really want to cross. Right. Okay. So you'll send Carl maybe that contact as he gets. Yeah, we know Jeff Wallach is the president of the club, so I can send you his phone number. So and in Pine Valley, I drove a tractor to school, so who's going to give me the snowmobile to drive? Oh, nobody, I see. <laughs> Do I need a we, license? Come on, Scott, stop shaking your head. And if we can get this oh, organized and uh, pull together, somewhere. I anticipate I it being a yearly thing. I'm sure uh, I could drive a snowmobile. It's just that I wanted to make sure that there were any legal things out there that I need to know before, you know, I make the announcement and the kids go, yay. And they, yeah, but you don't check the kids that register, drive their vehicles every day school now, do you? 
Well, we have uh, the sheriff once in a while. He'll go out, check for tags, making sure that the kids have but tags. But if you have a senior right now, drive to school and take his mom's car. You don't check his insurance card. You don't check any of that stuff, right? No. No. Just, they, they so no. if they're going to drive the sled to school one day, why do you want them to get their parent all that information to bring into your school? What are you going to do with it? But it's it's got to be properly registered. No, we do right. get information. They tell us, you know, what their car is, their vehicle, whatever cars they'd be driving, permission from their parents. No, they do it. They ride. they do it on a regular basis. Is what I'm getting from this, right? If they can ride, they can ride their sled to school as long as it's registered. No, he's the saying one day. So right. you no, know, that's a different thing. Different. So that is, I, what I'm taking from this is that if you don't have one or you know somebody who has one and you want <laughs> to bring it and know you're not riding mine but um it i i think so snowmobiles are a little bit different than tractors and they go a little <laughs> faster they go, they go a lot faster and um it's a motor vehicle move the story along please. it has to be insured and registered. so if, if you wanted to do that i mean couldn't you try to arrange something where they could we could set up like a little track or something on here during us if you had a study hall or something and they could go out and just kind of no, ride it around no, here no, or something like that no, okay no. but then so the idea of riding the snowmobile to they're, school they're is probably to not a like a, right they're they come to, to school not, okay. instead of like bringing bring a car season. they bring their snowmobile they park no no, no i'm not saying for the whole season I, i'm saying they know. should be able to i mean if they're going to park this we want to drive every single day of the season then they should, should show id and all that but if they're only coming from one day why do you guys want all that paperwork for them to come one down they're not coming for one day well, he is, the he is not. Hang on. Thing. I'm saying if someone rides their snowmobile for one day, they should register it because I guarantee it they're going to bring it back to school another day, especially if they have a good time riding it. Well, yeah. First of all, they have to sign up whoever's going right. to Right. And we want to know who the kids are only because if something happens, if you know, they're going to bring it every day, yes, I see that. But if you're going to have drive your snowmobile to school one day, Every kid is going to borrow everybody else's possible. If I had three right, they sleds just have to home, register. I would give all three of my sleds to any of the kids who could drive, and they would all bring it. You're not going to get all the Well, I would hope that they have, way like, more at least the proof of safety. <laughs> okay, if this, the one thing I would have to add in is from the insurance perspective. Yes. If oh, we, as goes. a dis, I, it's my hat, i got to wear it. Yeah. If we, as a district, are sponsoring this day, I mean, as opposed to anyone who's coming in throughout the year. We do have forms, actually, that the families can sign off on saying, just like we do for other events, if we're doing like a staff student, uh, like pickup game or whatever the case may be, that they sign off saying, okay. we know, we, we know that. If you want to you know, keep it simple, then we'll go that way. That is simple. I mean, Perfect. but at least then they're signing right. off saying, they we're going to do it. They just registered that they're going to do it. They sign off on the form. It's a one-day thing. And we're good to go. Over. Then our insurance company says we're covered. Kelly's right. They may not have one, but they're going to ride somebody else's. Problem solved. Oh, yeah. All right. Any questions? They're not going to see you, though. Nope. Great. Thank you. I want to see you ride a sled to school, though. (laughs) Maybe Scott will give him one. (laughs) All you do is come down the hill. You don't even need a helmet coming that far. Oh, that's real, real good. Real good promotion. (laughs) (laughs) Something across the street. Okay. Not a Eric? No problem, thank you. I'm just following up with Carl on the Regents' exams going on right now. When Carl reports out, just bear in mind that with uh, kids with IEPs, kids with 504 plans, there is also that safety net, so we're aiming for a 65 to get that Regents diploma, but then there's different kinds of safety net pieces going on that'll allow them to get ultimately possibly a local diploma. Uh, they could score somewhere even down into the low, into the low in the 50s in terms of passing. So when he'll tell you the passing rates, we're going to talk about 65 as that passing rate, but maybe depending on how the numbers shake out, we're also looking, depending on the cohort who's testing in it, that these kids are going to be still eligible for local their local diploma. So that's also, even though that's not our goal, there's still that, that, that our goal is for them to leave with a diploma, obviously a regents diploma, but also if they need to have a local diploma. So that's that's great too. Uh, Unified Bowling starts this week. Um, I'll get I'll forward you guys an email that has the dates of the matches. Um, we're excited again. We've got a bigger turnout, I think, than last year, so we're really excited with that. Um, I know Kathy did, asked that I talk a little bit about early intervention and child find kind of piece combined. Uh, so what that entails is uh, part of one of my two commi- three committees is the Committee for Preschool Special Education, that's CPSE. Uh, what that is is that's kids from a that's kids three and four who aren't school age yet, so kindergarten. But this is the services that they get before 
they go to school. So what happens when they're when kids are being seen and um, they're referred usually by their pediatrician or before that uh, to early intervention, which is called EI. So here come the acronyms. I'm, I'm sorry, but um, when they transition out of there, um, they go into. Um, from those kids who are being serviced by the county, the county refers them to us, uh, to the school aid, to school districts at three. So prior to them being three, they're getting services. Um, the pediatrician refers them, and we're um, when they transition to three, that's when we grab them and we um, evaluate, and usually we link up with agencies for that. The agencies do the evaluations. We meet as a, as a school. Uh, preschool special education is kind of goofy in a way to me um, because the school district facilitates it. Um, we we kind of liaise with it. The county pays for it and supervises um, the services being provided. But then at the same time, we don't actually, the district doesn't provide the services ourselves. We then reach out to agencies like Therapeutic Link, the Children's League, Buffalo Hearing and Speech, um, depending on the county that they're in. Uh, to really then provide those services for the kids. Uh, so it's kind of a challenge um, for Michelle in our office and us to just really hunt down those providers once we re once they're eligible for those services. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to it. But right now, um, the, you know, in terms of child find, when children and families register for that they have, I, when the kids' families move into Holland and they register for school, they check off whether any of their family members have disabilities or they suspect them of disabilities, and that's where we reach out to them. In addition, we do uh, screening at UPK. We did that last year, starting with uh, Color Your World and us. Uh, we reach out to them, provide speech language uh, quick screens to kind of increase our see, seeing what we can catch because that's what we're hearing is the kids are coming in a little needier. Is, what we're hearing. Um, so we started that last year. Can, yes. Can I ask a question Absolutely. about that? Because that seems to be, um, we don't seem to be catching them soon enough. And now they come in and they need extra services in the lower grades. Yes. Is there a way we can publicize that more, whether it be on the district bulletin, you know, the, the, the uh, newsletters that we sent home, you know, these screenings are available. Probably you know, should go on everything. You know, it should really go just like you said it should go on everything you know or you know and maybe some hot button you know you know can your child catch a ball can you know things you know almost like things your your child should be doing coming into kindergarten something you know not overwhelming but i i don't know that i don't know that i would i would have been aware that those services would have been available at three and four years old Right, absolutely, and that's the and that's the challenge. That one of the nice things of having color of having the UPK both sites here is that our staff are are around. Our occupational therapists are in the hallway. Our speech therapists push so in. So we're catching the, the pre-K. We're catching them at pre-K, but then we're for maybe a th two thirds of the population. Then we're miss two thirds of the three year olds. We're not yet because they right. have to do. They have a year of three because of the way their birthday is. They have a year where they're three, and then they have a another year when they go to UPK. So how right. are you saying that we can find them? It's strictly their pediatrician refers that. Traditionally, that's where it comes from. Uh, other districts, what other districts do is they do we uh, and I you know I did with Color Your World and with um, the pre with the pre K in South Wales before it closed was we, I went up, you know, we go out and we word of mouth, we talk to the directors, we talk to those people who are there uh, to try to find, so if you're thinking about it, those extra 40 kids and how we can reach out to them. A lot of times that's where those kids with severe, they're not, they're not talking on time, they're not moving like they should normally move, so we're getting those referrals. So like if you ballpark the numbers of referrals that we had, um, you know, I'll back up to, uh, we'll do 15-16. In 15-16, we had eight referrals to, to preschool. Uh, in 16-17, we had eight referrals. 17-18, our first year of Color Your World, we had 10 referrals. And this year, we've already had 13 in our office of referrals to the committee to be have these kids, our kiddos evaluated. So we've actually almost, um, we've gone from eight to 13. So Eric, is it common and would it be okay we give you the authority to go to the area preschools? Mm -hmm. to, to do that? I mean, I'm assuming there's a process in how Absolutely. we go about this and, appropriately. And that would be another thing is maybe I, could, I would go 
I believe there's open house signs, things like that, with a little flyer, with a little handouts from, you know, ECDC is Erie County, it's the Erie County for um, like development for children. They have handouts and things like that with those developmental milestones and things like that. Right, well. that's what I was saying. If on our newsletter that we're sending home, you know, it, uh, upcoming parents of upcoming kindergartners, you know, can your child do this? Can your I child do this? Right. You know, and catch them before they get into... Absolutely. But well, I didn't put it in the mailer. But so if anything that we're sending out in terms of those mailers, right. they go to all the... Because that should members. go to everyone in the district. Absolutely. And I can I can put something together for that. We, in just, terms of that. Never, we just brought this up at our PTO meeting, and Jason and I have spoke about this too as well, is that... Um, we were working out at a way to reach out to parents to um, kind of touch on this because there's so many people that just don't know at those early years that you can get these services or they they know about it but they won't do it because they are afraid that their child's going to be labeled right right we've been really lucky once they get to now with the UPK we've been really aggressive and not like in your face, like antagonizing families, but very proactive with right. reaching out to those families and 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 seeing what we can do in terms of providing those supports. Because that's the thing is the key is just like early intervention, you know, at, before they turn three, is it really intervening earlier the better. And that's the same idea behind it. Um, it's it's a double edged sword in in a way though too. And so with it comes the like we've seen this year with our increased in kids being referred. Um, just like last year, there ends up because we ha what we have to do as a school district then is we reach out to those agencies to provide the services. And there's a limited number of service providers then in terms of speech language therapists, um, special ed teachers that would travel into the home or into the daycare to provide services for two hours a week, things like that. Uh, we reach our pool and just like East Aurora does and Springville, uh, we all kind of max out sometimes around Jan I found this year and last year we've in terms of speech language therapists, we're hard pressed to find a speech language therapist right now. Um, if we have a new referral, the district would make the recommendation, then we'll reach out and we can, we're gonna be hard pressed to find um, providers. And, the, and that's not, a, it's, it's one of those, it's hard, it's a hard call, talk to talk to the family saying your child has this need, we're gonna reach out, but the pool is limited in terms of that people. So what we're doing is we're, you know, I attended a training in Batavia two weeks ago where we're going to look into our district becoming a special ed a state approved special education provider for preschool and so what that'll entail is us and this goes back to that elementary school position which isn't we're not projecting because it takes six to eight months but we're going to have a special ed teacher with that special education teacher in the elementary building the goal would be we'll be able to push into the special ed classrooms or excuse me the classrooms in Miss Valera the UPK room or the other UPK teacher, and they'll be able to provide those special ed services in-house. And same with our our speech therapist, our speech therapist, our staff can provide speech therapy for them, which would then kind of like what I was worried about, and I I get it with the stuff. But then that would lighten the load up for them. Buffalo hearing speech is speech provider to go to homes, which we can't do, which they can't do. Not to make it about money, but then that would be billable to the county. Correct. Correct. So, Eric, I told you, Eric, we've been looking at this for a while. This training came up. Eric spent his day there in Batavia, and that's what we're hoping that our hope and belief is that we can become the site. And you ready next month? <laughs> no. <laughs> Six eight months, they told me. But we're they, rolling on it right now. No, we're, we're hoping for next year, but okay. I don't know. Because that, it does. It kind of offsets itself. And that what it does is really because, say, the speech therapist that we've had dedicated here through like Therapeutic Link, who are either residents or they live nearby and we can always count on them, then we can rely, use them to go do the home part of it that we can't meet their, that we can't triage. Because we're being creative with how we're meeting their needs now in terms of grouping kids like the county really would like, but this would allow us to really free up some re their resources so they can work with our kids that right now we can't provide. Um, we can't find providers for, I guess I'd say. So it's kind of a win-win. But I will, I think that's a great idea in terms of um, reaching out using our newsletter. So it's already on the web, website, but, re, but trying to find, be able to improve how we're reaching out in terms of daycares and things like that. Right. Isn't there a way, Eric, that you could have like a uh, like parent network come back in and have like a parent mm -hmm. night again? Yeah. We could. To do like, I don't know how you would approach it, but. 
you know, a, a night to explain that process to the parents or to say, you know, if you feel that your child is not reaching the milestones, maybe... It would have to be an informational. We have yeah, to be very like a, careful yeah, how we yeah. go about this. Y you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, but that's... I mean, uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I just find some way. You don't have knowledge A unique of way of saying to become we, informed right. so what's about... What's our first data about kids who live in the district? And when the location? we first get knowledge of them? Yeah. Um... You, typically, when when they when they move in, typically oh, when probably. they no, but I mean, so okay, so yep. I have a baby today. Mm -hmm. When do you first find out about? Twenty-five. <sighs> no, well, Mark said right. Well, well not really. Not really. really. It's so sooner than it, that. It's well, your pediatrician should be forthright with you and say your child's not saying fifty words at two. He you, he should or she should recommend to you. Maybe you should get speech services. Now I'm going to speak on my yeah. personal behalf. Yeah. My pediatrician did not do that. And I, I knew something was wrong with my right. son. And he was in the office flipping the lights off, screaming. He was right. just out of control. And I looked at my pediatrician. I said, do you think I should call early intervention? And he's like, oh, I guess you could. <laughs> well, gee, thanks. You know, right. so I took the initiative to call early intervention. Or they tell you I'm worried. Say, it's okay. developmental. We don't know. Yeah, no, they were great. It's early intervention was great. No, I'm saying about the your yeah. pediatrician. We oh, them and then you find out right away. Right. Right. Oh, then we no, have to provide the service. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking yeah. if we had a way to yeah, no. just yeah. send a, an informational thing out. Yeah, and then I mean, but if I didn't do that, he wouldn't be where he is now. He's he had an IEP. He's declassified since first grade. Academically, he's you know he's got 90s. I mean. He learned how to cope and do the things that he needed to do at the early ages where I didn't have to try and, you know, here versus you have a fifth or sixth right. grader that is struggling so badly, you know. I, I, and I do want to just say again, having our, and I know we're talking about the year before, those third, that three-year-old range, but having the UPK in our building has done wonders in terms of for yeah. us being able to provide really good and full day. Obviously, really has helped too. But really, being able to determine who's struggling, who really has that need, whose language isn't developing like we think it should, and we're really able to start triaging and catching those kids early. And that was always a challenge we had with Color Your World was just. It's, I hate so, to if say there was a way that. to find out, and this must be a way, mm -hmm. the bit, the births in our area, and we took a bag of books. Welcome gift the district. You already have contact information where you could send occasional information out. Do, do you know what I'm saying? That's where I, that's I, just, where I was going with we it. We have not to figure books, out how to do it. Yeah. Well, but, that is, right. it used to be a program. It's an idea. It really yeah. was a program, the bag of books. I mean, there, <clears> there was a whole point for that so that people had books to read to their kids. You could put it at, like, couldn't you put it at, like, um, the, you know, like a, the local daycare, the pediatrician's offices, the area. Well, I, there's, Absolutely. there's, I mean, I, if they're going to a daycare, that's, in my opinion, that's the easiest catch. Yeah. yeah but it's the ones who don't. <laughs> right. Right. That you, you have to have that, that safety net. You can that's catch right. your in-home daycares. You know, but those. I think having that in that monthly, in, in, that news, in the newsletter that we're sending yeah. out. Yeah. Right. Too. And putting a, having a little column for that, just on stuff like, similar to that, would be very yeah. helpful. Because the goal would be to hit them early when they're young versus when they're older. Always. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in terms of if I, the, the way, the part that I just spoke of was, would be they help us with evaluations because they're, because we're also not allowed to do our own evaluation. We have to reach, the, the parents have to, it's this crazy, it's very confusing for families, which then causes, but we're, we're good in terms of our office, you know, not just with Michelle, but um, Heather just really communicating with families about the process, helping them make sure they, they go through it so that they follow through because they have to select, a, they have to select an evaluator. So first they'll select Therapeutic Link and Therapeutic Link, then we'll send their evaluators out. Uh, once we have the meeting, sometimes an agency, um, We'll already be providing those services at, a, uh, at early intervention at 
two or three when they switch over. And so it's easy for us to find then them to continue. We'll just go, oh, do you want to continue two times a week with, with, you know, with therapist Shirley? And they go, sure. And then, but then we're all set. Um, we reach out to them um, and just secure them to make sure that they can meet the mandates on their on the child's individualized education program. And so they're then the provider that just goes and provides the services. They'll come into our school and provide the services in the classroom or in a hall, depending on what activities they're doing. And it's their staff that then provide the preschool services for that student, for students, related services. It all goes through the county. So what we're talking about in terms of us maybe becoming a provider is then instead of Therapy, us will build the county for our services. Um, and that's where we're just the liaison. We, we have the meeting, and it's a great idea because then when they go to kindergarten, we know the kid. We've had two years, hopefully, of meetings about the student. We know exactly where they, what their needs are. Um, but we're really the in between between the county paying directly to the agency and us kind of uh, recommending the level of service that the agency needs to hopefully we can find an agency to provide. It's a little confusing to me too. Sometimes <laughs> it's not that confusing. So confusing. sorry. Um, so that'll be our goal. So then we'll to act on it. We'll reach it. We'll continue to expand our reach out and using the newsletter, uh, the calendar. I think is another good opportunity. Right. Having a spot in there just about it. Um, we'll we can work with our Josh website. to try to increase maybe yeah, some we'll of the other stuff. And you'll keep that. doing the thing that you went yeah. through the other day to try to see if we can get to the site. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Heard okay. I actually have nothing. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Approval of uh, resolved upon the recommendation of Superintendent Kathy E. Fabianos that the Board of personnel. Education approve personnel items four through seven. Can I have a motion? So, Mary, Mary Jo. Jo. Mary jo. And a second? Jerry. Jerry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Is there anyone in the audience you'd like to no, recognize? No, they have nobody. Um, uh, bus bond bid results resolved that the Board of Education approved the bus bond bid results awarding the sale of bonds in the amount of Two twenty-four five ninety to the Bank of Evans at a rate of three point one five percent. Can I have a motion? So moved, Mary Jo. And a second. Second, Scott. Uh, all in favor? Uh, any questions on this? No. No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Five to zero, Jerry Epstein. Questions on deletion of inventory, or um, there's also I, I actually did have a question on the deletion from inventory. We okay. own those vending machines, I take it. Do, the ones we got now. Yeah. The new ones. No, the ones that we're no, getting the rid of. The ones that we're getting rid of. Just just look into because a lot of times those are owned by a company. Am I misspeaking there? Our for cool is one vending machine, so okay. yeah, I I don't know about those. I asked, and it was a long time ago because they were sitting here supposed to be moved ages ago. They're pets, you keep... No, they're not. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. should. No, but like right, the, but like no the they're not. Ones they took their, so no, they those are gone. Because yeah. otherwise, we wouldn't delete them. <clears throat> yeah. The ones they yeah. just took, but you didn't have to delete those. Okay. Because that's why they just moved them out. Of here. <clears throat> um, and I want to recognize a donation. Uh, that from the Chamberlain family, I just lost everything. Oh, maybe not. Uh, Chamberlain family donated a thousand dollars to the high school musicals. Okay. 
Any reports, NISBA? Anything? Uh, policy? Anything new on policy? No. Um, nothing new on negotiations? Can we set up a date for that? We talked about this last time, but can we set up a date for negotiations so if you talk about items that we want to start putting yeah. on our list of items of possibilities? One of those items is probably those larger study up, those larger study halls. I think there's a contractual issue with going to the large study halls. So I could be mistaken, but am I mistaken? I don't think there's anything in our contract. Okay. okay. But things we can talk about, you know, like the things to bring up for the next yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wall of Honor. Um, we met, I think, twice since the last meeting, and um, things are moving forward. We do have one of the mem uh, community members who um, verbally said that he was going to be resigning because he's not going to be in the area, okay. um, like Little. And so we're going to have to look to replace him by our procedures, which I have that document. I saw it. So... Um, that's something for the, for, no, he's just, I think he's a snowbird or something like that. So um, he's not really around. So, so anyway, um, but um, publications went out, so things are moving forward. The, so the, the night that we recognize that, I got an invitation and it just says like an employee recognition night. Not that I want to have a long discussion about this, but we need to come up with a name for so that somebody night. suggested Holland Honors. I don't know. I'm just throwing it Ice Honors, what it was, what it used to be, what, what the Triple what H they, Award. Yeah, the Triple H, but we call it Holland's Highest Honors, and that's from, everybody uh, there the highest honors. So let's honors. do that. Is, that. is that good? Just somebody tell us. What to do. Sounds good. Because he loves alliteration. I do. <laughs> you got it. Anybody have a problem with that? Nice. No, we're good. Anyway. Yeah. Good. That's a, that's the name. Okay. Boy, that was quick. Maybe that was yeah, we see that was. Discussion. Well, I threw it out in the office, and I think Lynette came up with Holland Honors. So yeah. there you go. Transportation, nothing. Smart school. He said smart school. Smart school. Got okay, nothing on it. Uh, finance, no, um, facilities, we met last Thursday, um, we met with the financial planners, we, uh, you, want, you take the lead on that, you take better notes than I do. Facilities. Mm. Um, let's see. No, I'm just trying to think, I, I sent you all an email. Yeah. Um, we did. I'll get an email. On yeah. That. So you got it covered. Yeah. Thank you. And I did talk to the state, and I will continue to do so. I've got to grab, gather some information. No, I can okay. okay. no, I'll let you know how that comes out. She's not hanging. She's not hanging. Okay. Okay. What's my magic? Okay. Maybe. I'm going to try. Activities. Um, oh, I talked to her Friday. I worked all day Friday. Upcoming meetings. Second, or nothing. Oh, anything? real quickly on upcoming meetings. Did you guys see the email that Tom sent out that we're going to move our presentation of our budget to the to the police arm? Yeah. Okay. I did see that. Nope. Got time to that too. So it's yeah. not the school. So bring refreshments. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. I said refreshments are good. Yeah. Um. Uh, Board of Education discussion of the privilege of the floor roundtable. I, I just have one one thing for us to consider. Um, so, with the notifications that are automated notifications versus when the school is calling because your child is sick and you need to come pick them up, um, <clears throat> it, it seems like they're all coming from the same number, trunk number, the same extension. And I'm wondering if there is a way, without incurring crazy expense, but with, if there's a way that we could have 
robocalls come from one number and have when the school is calling for something that is urgent that really needs mom and dad to pick up the phone right now come from a different number. Yeah, I don't number. know the answer, but I can look at it. If we could just look at that. It's quite funny when we're at work and all of a sudden the phones go off and go, oh, geez, what's the school want now? And it could be, you know, like you could said, be something if, important if, you're, if, you're so, doing if it, you right? guys are so used to saying that, you know, you get in the daytime saying, yeah, well, I guess they must not be having school after school time. I had a transportation no, okay. issue that the note got misplaced or whatever, and they were calling me, and I was kind of doing, uh, all right, I'll get it just in case. And it was a good thing I did, because I thought it was a robocall. Yeah, I don't know if the password, but I certainly looked at it. Everything, Jerry? New fancy phones. I did talk to Eric about it, so yeah, if you could get us anything that you know. We should really look into that, like, put that on the wish list items. Well, I think they can just be part of curriculum. I'm sure it's not anything ridiculously expensive that we can't do. It's to try to figure out how do we take kids through there do we call it something else do, do you know what I'm saying or do we just use it for certain kids I mean if we want everybody to get it we have to find a, a better way to get there do you there know what I'm saying when they don't teach there you go that might be a good idea that might be a very good idea actually be a useful time every teenage kid though I think could benefit from that class. Some of us adults can too. Yeah. <laughs> Rush, do you have anything? It's a proposed every year, every single year. Every year it's been proposed every single year. Right. So. Okay. There was some heated conversation in the NISPA legislative piece about that was maybe not directly related to this, but it was the whole um, the bill, with, you know, no firearms on school property, and um, and it could potentially extend to law enforcement and so forth. There were a lot of concerns about it. It was it was one of the one of the more extensive deliberations in the NISBA le legislative session that you all stuck me with. What's that? Yeah. Right. Well, with every piece of legislation, you know, timing is everything, so it's... <laughs> you want to draft something? Yeah. Okay, yeah. In support of that, yeah, draft it, and we'll we'll pass it at the next meeting. And, uh, you know, if there's another district, there's another district that's doing something very similar. Um, if, I think it was in Eclipse or something like that. You might be able to just copy and paste what they, what they did. Um, yeah, I agree. There's one that they, it may even be the same same guy. He he wants to ban all contact sports. It's the same same guy, I believe. So anyway. well, everybody will just do this all day. Right. Meanwhile, we're going to be hiring an occupational therapist next because kids aren't functional. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Mary Jo? No, I'm good. I don't have anything either. So we'll adjourn to executive session. The purpose of? Uh, the purpose of discussing superintendent's contract and student discipline. And can we go over the review of the surveys that we got? Yes. Thank you. Eight twenty eight. A motion to it. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Second.
Yep. Carried. Carried. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nope. Motion carried. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for